Hello, I am Stephanie Kilgast and I am a contemporary artist. Today I'm going to share with you the process of sculpting my latest mixed media sculpture, which I called Taking Sides. This sculpture probably took somewhere between 40 and 50 hours to make and it is currently still available. Probably not going to be available for too long, or at least I hope so. But if you are interested, please check out my website to see prices and more pictures. If you do not know my work, I currently focus on growing surrealistic, very colorful, erratic sculptures inspired by nature onto human-made objects and also trash. I'm mostly interested in the dialogue between humanity and nature because I think humanity belongs to nature, which we tend to forget. We often do not realize that the impact we have on nature doesn't just affect nature, but directly affects us because nature is our environment and it is our home and by destroying it we destroy ourselves. This is a very important theme in my artwork in general and because it's such a heavy theme and such an important issue nowadays and I feel like it's one of the most important issues of our time, I like to add a lot of colors to make my artwork bright and hopeful. I, I do believe that with hope and work and with the right mindset we can achieve great things and I don't think that focusing on everything that is wrong is going to help us because it gets depressing really fast. So this is why I usually pick very bright colors and something that is very happy. I really like to see my work as something that has kind of a bright post-apocalyptic feel. It's like everything went wrong, but it still looks really good. I sometimes do very surrealistic work that really depends. My latest growth on tin cans are a little bit more subtle in the surrealism. The quickiness lies into me mixing different types of natures together as I am very much inspired by corals and the woodlands and usually you don't see those together. So I just mix and match however I want and I pick colors of my liking as well. For taking sides I actually started with the pink mushrooms. I originally intended them for my pink bear sculpture but I thought that didn't really work out so I just put it aside and I came back to it just recently to finish it as a growing sculpture. I didn't really know where I was going, I just wanted something rainbowy and then I just adjusted the colors as I went. I actually made some mistakes on coloring and picked some purple at some time and that did not work out as I intended it to and it just did look a little bit too... Um, I don't know, it just didn't work. So I removed the purple clay and then I reworked it in a um, shading of blue to green and yellow. Working with that amount of colors can get tricky at some times. Although I don't think anything is really wrong as it. If you look at art in general, artists can pick extremely vibrant and bold colors and sometimes and sometimes the assembling works even though it's not working if that makes sense you can pretty much mix any colors you like just you need to be your own judge if you like it or not because ultimately the viewer will like some artworks and won't like others I don't think it really matters if and everyone is going to like or find it appealing and I would not really bother too much about color theory because sometimes ugly matches of colors make for really interesting artworks. Especially if you can develop your own color combinations in that sense that 
Now, often artists tend to like a certain color combination for some reason. It's just personal preference usually. And, and so they feel comfortable in that. And I think that is something that is quite important as an artist to find out and just to try to stay true to yourself. I've seen it a lot that aspiring artists or people who just start out are trying to copy other color combinations and then they don't really know where they're going and and you cannot grow as an artist if you don't know where you are going you really need to understand what your motivations are what are your intentions as an artist why are you doing what you do and then what are your favorite themes and colors and the more you work, the better you will know what drives you as an artist. And the better you know yourself, the truer to yourself you can be and stay. And this is really what will make your art stand out among others. Because then you are going to speak for yourself. Obviously, certain themes are a bit everywhere in the art world right now. So the environmental crisis obviously is everywhere. If you look at art history, art always speaks about the time that it is made in. So it makes sense that the environmental crisis is one of the biggest topics right now. And this often goes with a very lush natural growth. So you can see that in many different artworks and another thing that I've seen that is very similar to what I do is just the sheer amount of growing it's like something a bit of a maximalist and that's quite interesting too I think because I feel like in our societies we are crushed by too many options and too much stuff and products and I think as 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 a species we long to nature and we long to something that has more meaning and sense and so we are we are being crushed by the demand of consuming more and more products and buying more stuff that we don't really need um clothes and shoes and jewelry and whatnot and stuff that is made in such mass production and it's it's not something that has much value in itself. It's not like when you buy handmade clothes from one artisan that spends weeks, mon sometimes months on it. This has some essential value in itself because there has been a lot of skills needed. But nowadays everything is just rushed and made in poor conditions and we are drowning in that mass of products but i feel like this but i think that this mass of products and things pushes us uh, some of us at least some of us artists to seek the mass and maxim maximalism elsewhere and that often happens in nature nature is very massive when it comes to growth so um yeah that's that's like a recurrent theme i've seen in the art world right now which i very much uh, like obviously because i'm working as well in it and that's fine if you know why you are doing what you do and um really pick what it means what your art means to, to you what your intentions are what your favorite colors and preferences are then you are going to be able to make artwork that is the most interesting for yourself. Okay, that's pretty much it for today. I really hope you enjoyed seeing me speed sculpting and me talking a little bit about what it means to be an artist. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss any new upcoming videos and I will see you in my next one. Bye.